Okay, can we, can I ask uh, what is kind of, what, what is it that you do? Um, so do you intermittent fast and uh, kind of what protocol do you follow? Do you ever do any longer fasts? I don't do longer fasts. I do daily time restricted eating. I don't eat breakfast and I'll eat all my food with between usually noon and 6 p.m. Uh, yeah, so it's it's uh, pretty much 18.6. Right. And uh, well, I, I used to exercise a lot. I did a lot of distance running, trail running, and 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 also mountain biking. And then, uh, geez, it's been two and a half years ago. Well, it started two and a half years ago. Anyway, the bottom line is I had a mountain bike accident, and I I tore my rectus abdominis and adductor muscles off the pubic bone. Right. And you can't do anything. You, you can't hardly move at all without your core. Those are your core yeah. muscles, or some of the key core muscles. So, so I've had, over the last two years, three surgeries, and I'm still having a lot of trouble um, you know, I haven't been able to get, uh, essentially now the only exercise I'm getting is some walking. Right. And, and I went through a period after this initially happened where I was getting really depressed, mm. you know, cause I was so used to exercising and many of your viewers will probably had a similar experience if they exercise and then they get an injury, they may actually start getting depressed. Mm -hmm. um, and so anyway, now I've learned to kind of substitute. I'm still engaged in a lot of intellectual activities like this. Um, I teach courses at Johns Hopkins and I'm involved in helping with some human research studies with intermittent fasting. Uh, I've written one book actually, which focuses on intermittent fasting. It's at the publisher now, but it's not going to be till probably the end of this year before it comes out. And then I'm working on a second book on the brain's most important neurotransmitter, mm -hmm. which is BDNF. <laughs> no, no. Yeah, I did it. Excitatory, excitatory mm -hmm. neurotransmitter. Oh, glutamate. Amino acid glutamate. Yeah. Glutamate. Right. So at least your, your viewers will have learned that something that if I ask, for example, a psychiatrist or uh, even some neurologist, what's the most important neurotransmitter, they'll say dopamine or serotonin, right? acetylcholine. But it's not true. Those, th the circuits, th there's only a small number of neurons that actually produce serotonin, dopamine, and they can affect, modulate the activity in the glutamatergic neural networks. But throughout the brain, it's the glutamate neurons that are triggering the activity. These other neurotransmitters subtly modify that activity mm. in important ways. But if you don't have glutamate, you're dead. If, if, you're, if you have impaired serotonin or dopamine, you'll have some behavioral issues, but you're not going to die. Right. Interesting. Okay, and then I've been playing a lot of chess, too. All right. Yeah, that's that's good. That's, that's good for you. Um, okay, I mean, the, the, those books will be really interesting. I certainly look forward to seeing them. Uh, do you take any supplements? Just vitamin D. Actually, now I'm taking... Uh, I take vitamin C and I've been taking, I'm trying to, I'm still having trouble with this core muscles and the tendons healing properly. So I'm taking collagen peptides and hyaluronic acid, mm -hmm. but I don't know. We'll see. There's some quite a bit of animal data suggesting benefits, a little bit of human data. Um, 
Sorry. But the I, idea is I'm trying to get, you know, the healing of the tendons and muscles uh, and, and vitamin D, yeah, vitamin D. Vitamin D, right. Yeah, no, that, I mean, that makes sense. And, and then the, the collagen, so to, to rebuild. I mean, you, you're doing physiotherapy as well, I assume. Yeah. yeah. And I'm just trying to strengthen and stretch the core muscles. And <laughs> that's a long story. But I also got problems with uh, the tendons on the outside of my feet because the weakness in the adductor muscles puts extra strain on the outside because mm -hmm. you know, the adductors aren't keeping the knee in as well as they should you know even when walking so it's uh, uh yeah okay well i wish you luck with that i hope that you found the video informative we will continue posting videos daily on the latest news in anti-aging and extending health span we will also bring experts from around the world to discuss the latest advances in the longevity field Please do hit the thumbs up button, subscribe to our channel and hit the bell button and choose all for any new video release notifications. Thank you so much for your kind support. I wish you all well and we'll speak to you again soon.